Hi, my name's Sue and this is Sue Marie P and I'm going to share a video on how to make English muffins with spelt flour. English muff muffins <laughs> look like this. They're the sort that you split in half and you can have them with spreads or eggs, perfect for the weekend. And with spelt flour, they're even better. Well, I think they are. First thing we need to do is, behind me, I've just heated up some liquid. So it's just warm, not boiling, 325 mils of warm water with a little bit of milk. So I've done half and half oat milk, half of water. So I'm just gonna pour that into my jug and then that's ready to use. But this would work fine if you just wanted to do all water as well. So I'm gonna do it on my stand mixer, but you can do it by hand. So in here, I'm gonna add a little bit of whole grain flour. So 75 grams of whole grain spelt. And then I've got 375 of white spelt flour. I, you can add a little bit more whole grain, but I've just run out today. So that's all I'm doing today. And in there, I've got two teaspoons or seven grams of fast yeast. I'm just gonna whisk those together. I'm gonna pour most of the liquid in except for like a little bit. I'll just reserve some in case I don't need it because sometimes you don't need all your liquid depending on the humidity, type of flour you've used. So just let's start mixing this on low for about a minute and then we'll bump up the speed and then knead it for about five minutes. If you're doing it by hand, you may need to take about 10 minutes to knead your dough. I don't like adding sugar, but if you want to add a little bit of sugar, feel free to. Now that's kind of mixed in together, I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. It's really important not to add the salt next to the yeast because it deactivates it, or it could deactivate it. And there's many recipes out there that use melted butter, but today I'm going to use olive oil because I wanted to make it so it was dairy free because I've got quite a few visit visitors. I've got quite a few viewers who um, prefer things dairy free. So I'm doing two tablespoons of olive oil but you could swap that out and do two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm going to bump up the speed now and pop my timer for five minutes. And I'm going to throw all this liquid in. Do a bit of a mixing dance. I'll do a little bit of a clean up. Pulling away from the sides of the bowl already. So while, while we're waiting for that, I like to transfer it into a separate bowl. This is kind of like a medium sized Pyrex bowl. Kind of a perfect size, because when it doubles in size, it comes to the top and I know it's ready. So in there, I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil. This is just sunflower oil. And then I've got a piece of plastic wrap that I've already cut off ready to cover it. I'm gonna give it the full five minutes. I'll try not to rush it. I've just zoomed you in. So I've got kind of wet hands. So my dough is really smooth and I'm going to stop it. There's about a minute to go on my clock. So I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to scoop it out. So the dough is quite hydrated. But what I'll do, I'll leave it like that and then we can add a little bit of flour to it when we do the kneading after it's risen. Because it's better to have your dough tacky and sticky than too dry. I'm going to coat that with oil, cover it with my plastic. So I've covered my dough with the plastic wrap and I'm going to just leave it here on the bench to rise for an hour until it doubles in size. I know it's done in this bowl when it reaches close to the top. Make sure you've got no windows open and it's in a draft free position. If your house is a little bit cooler, it may take a little bit longer. If it's warmer, it could be shorter. And then we'll divide all the dough. So we're back with our dough and it's lovely and bubbly and definitely doubled in size. Almost um, forgot about it. I was in another room and forgot to hear the timer. Anyway, you don't need to hear my excuses. I'm going to flour my bench. I like using um, rice flour now with spelt flour to knead it because it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to try and get this out onto my floured bench. Okay, add a little bit of flour to my hands. So I'm just going to knock some of this air out and when it's quite hydrated, so I'm going to add a little bit of flour to it. And you can also just 
um, knead this with spelt flour. So I've knocked some of the air out of it. Now the next step is I'm just going to let it rest here again with my bowl upside down on top of it, just so it doesn't get any air onto it, um, for another 20 minutes. And I'll try not to get distracted this time and um, come back and start dividing it. So we've got five minutes to go on our clock, um, but this is really ready. And I've just started heating up my fry pan. So I'm doing it on my induction hob just so it's close by to show you. And I'm just gonna drizzle in a tiny bit of oil. So just grabbed out my pastry brush and I'm just gonna lightly coat the bottom of that. If you've got a non-stick fry pan, you probably don't even need oil, but this pan is getting a bit old and worn now, so we need a tiny little bit of oil. And we want it, the pan to be warm or kind of hot, but not smoking. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna just put it on a medium heat. My induction hob goes a little bit faster than my gas, which I usually use for everyday cooking. So I just need to keep a little bit of an eye on it. So I'm just gonna slide that a little bit away so I've got some bench space. So I've got a tray ready to go on standby and I've just floured it and added polenta. Polenta is fine cornmeal and it's kind of a really fun way to roll the muffins in because it gives you a nice crunch when you bite into them. But if you don't have cornmeal or polenta in the house just don't, don't add it, just add flour. Okay so I'm going to add a little bit of flour to my hands and I'm going to start dividing. Now I usually try and weigh each <laughs> bun or muffin to be precise, but today I want to be a bit more relaxed for you so it doesn't have to be perfect and it's not too intimidating if you want to give this a go at home. So I'm going to divide it into eight rough pieces. We're doing home baking so it doesn't need to be perfect. We're not a factory. And so I'm doing it in half and I'm just kind of moulding it like a sausage. Half again. Just going to start. So like my pizza balls, I just stretch it and pinch it into back into the centre. So we've got like a tight little ball. You can roll it and cut it with a cookie, but I like this method. And then I just roll it a bit. So it's nice and flat and the seams are kind of almost hidden. And then we pop it on our floured polenta tray and just coat it on either side. So it's got a nice generous coating. And if you can see that, I've just coated it and then so then it's ready to cook. And I've got my tea towel on standby that's been um, dampened slightly. So I'm just gonna cover them as I go because the dough will dry out if you don't cover it. And I need to move quickly so this doesn't all get dry. Kind of flatten it if you want to have it kind of a bit not too puffy. And we'll coat it in our polenta. I'm super happy with the hydration today. It's lovely and fluffy and soft. Oh, as I'm rolling it, I don't know if I mentioned before, we don't need lots of flour. It's better if the bench is drier. We're trying to get those seams out. And look, if this part of the process you're still perfecting, um, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. If it doesn't look perfect, perfect, they'll still taste fantastic. I think I need to add a little bit more polenta to my tray, so I'm just going to sprinkle these with polenta on top. Just so it's got a generous coating. And that stops my towel sticking as well. Now I'm going to cook these straight away, but if you wanted to prep these and cook them later on for your family, you can do all the rolling and coating and cover them, pop them in the fridge. And then you can put them in the fridge overnight or you can put them in the fridge for an hour or two. But what I'd recommend is when you get them out of the fridge, just let them sit at room temperature for about half an hour before you start frying. And you can store them on the bench after they're cooked for about four days in a sealed container. And to freshen them up, they're just great if you just toast them slightly or lightly. And then you can also freeze them for up to about two months. My muffins are a roll, time to start cooking and I'll do about four at a time because we need to make sure that they are got a little bit of breathing space. So I'm just popping it in the pan 
gently and just leave a little bit of a space between them. Now we cook them on either side for about five to seven minutes until they're brown before we flip them. And then if you've got a lid, it's always good to pop a lid on as well and that'll help steam the buns. But if you don't have a lid, it'll still be fine. So let me pop, pop a timer on. Grab something to put them in when they're cooked. I like popping them um, in this container, which is my metal container with paper towel, or you can cool them on a rack, like your cake rack. Or you can cool them on something like this. What I might do today, I might cool them on that first and then transfer them into my container and just sneak a peek at them. Whoops, I flicked it over too early. I think that still needs cooking. I got a bit carried away and flipped one over a little bit too early, but I think the other ones, yeah, that's lovely and golden brown. Look at that. And I don't need the lid anymore. I'll just let them do their thing. My pan is probably a little bit on the squishy side. I've just shoved that one up the edge by mistake. So we'll give it about three minutes on this side. These are so fluffy today. I'm so excited. These are a bit yellow because I had um, lunch in this pan and I used turmeric. So don't be scared that yours are going to turn out yellow. That's just because I probably didn't clean my fry pan well enough. Okay, I'm going to grab these out because I think they're <laughs> tapping them and they sound hollow. The other thing is if you find that you cook them and they haven't quite cooked right through, um, you can either pop them in the oven or you can pop them in your toaster and they'll be fine. So let's take them all out. And I'm going to cook the next batch. I'm just adding a little bit of extra polenta as I'm popping them in. And if you think your fry pan's got a little bit dry, you can add a little bit more oil. Let's have a look. Oh, they're getting a very fluffy and golden. That looks good. <laughs> that one's quite large. It was almost cooked too much, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, I'll give it another three minutes. <laughs> they got that hollow bread sound. Sorry, I was just being play. I forgot I was recording. <laughs> I'm just going to leave him in. They've got about another minute and a half and we're almost done. Let me just cut one of these open so I can show you. I'm using a knife. I'm just slicing it. I'm going to turn these into like little pizza muffins tonight, which is a very childhood memory Australian thing that we used to do. But we always had store-bought ones. So look at that. They look lovely and fluffy and soft. I'm not going to taste test one now because it'll spoil my dinner tonight. And then we've got muffins ready for breakfast tomorrow as well. So I hope you've enjoyed my video today on how to make spelt flour English muffins. Don't be daunted. Try making them at home. You don't even need an oven. You can just pop them in the fry pan and cook them. And I'll pop a few other links to other um, spelt bread recipes that I've done that, that you might be interested in also. If you're new here today, um, consider subscribing. I do videos mainly with spelt flour, but I also love eating buckwheat flour, and I like eating some recipes that are gluten-free. I like doing easy no-bake treats, kind of with a bit of an Australian twist, and I do some easy dinner ideas. So if that's your kind of thing, lots of variety, consider subscribing. All you need is to have a Google account and hit the bell, and then you get notified when I've got a new video. And also I have a newsletter, which I send out little tidbits of information. I just do some um, kind of refresher ideas on my recipes and you can subscribe to that. It's free at the moment at sumarip.com and you can hit that. And I don't bombard you with too many newsletters, it's just once a month. What I should have said is I'm going to just let these rest until they're room temperature and then I store them in a sealed container. And that's all. So see you next time. Bye.